With the kind of ballyhoo that surrounds a midnight oil or an in excess, it's easy to forget just how well a band like The Church have done over the last decade. They've had top 20 hits in the US, they've got a significant European following, and it's quite likely that their musical influence has been and will be greater than those bands doing better in the marketplace. I spoke to Steve Kilby, the founder of The Church. They're doing a quick tour of Australia at the moment, and I found Steve to be a sort of laconic, no-nonsense sort of character, who whilst he still seems to be enjoying making the music, is very wary of the pop star process. I sort of long for the old days when musicians just played music, but um, you sort of got to be a multimedia personality these days, and I think that's, you know, I don't feel very comfortable with that. Mm. Is this just a total front, what you're doing now then? Well, you know, it's something that I mean, has to, you have to do it, don't mm. you? You know what it's like. You were in a famous group. Mm. Yeah, I read, uh, I read once of a, I think it might have been a writer, I can't remember who it was, but he said he actually enjoyed the talk show process in a, the US because it helped him define his work. I don't know, I always feel like um, you can really easily demystify your music mm. by, uh, you know, if you're very solemn or if you're very, you know, you're trying to be funny and or explaining what all your songs are about or if you're too enthusiastic, you've got to sort of strike this balance of um, not sort of pissing the interviewer off too much, but sort of, you know. You arrive here unexplained I can't believe the chance you took I can't believe you're back again It's a loaded question, I don't know. I mean, some people perceive us like that. Something quite to this quickly steve kilby's book called earth coming out on tuesday uh, it's out now it's, oh it is yeah it's it sort of leaked out yeah already. it leaked <laughs> yeah okay and with this book goes an album that's right now that's a, uh, probably the first in the world i think it is a yeah. soundtrack album for, for a, a book. book now what what actually is in the book just poetry or uh it's prose poetry uh-huh so you've jotted this on the road while you've been working with the church it's a lot of it yeah over how long uh about a year the White Plague, Forget Everything, Hotel, you'd have been in a few of those. Yeah. Wish I knew what you were looking for. I might have known what you would find. I suppose we are a pop band, but I, I don't sort of, I don't think of us as, as being a pop band or a rock band or a psychedelic band or anything else. It's just, it's, you know, Anything, anything goes. Whole thing up. So you're like, when you're a singing, songwriting, bass player, you're like, it's a good position to be in. It's a really because you're like at the very top end and you're right down at the bottom as well. So it's sort of like you're working on the roof and you're working on the and you're working on the drains um, and everything in between. So I think I, I think see how you've arrived at certain positions. I knew you'd find me crying. Tell those girls with rifles for minds That their jokes don't make me laugh They only make me feel like dying In unguarded moments uh, Australian group The Church, one of the, uh, I would say one of the foremost Australian rock bands to come out in the last 25 years or so. Um, Steve, I, I think what I want to ask you first of all, before you're, you're going up on a, a festival stage tonight, your band is renowned for creating uh, very layered and textured music um, and uh, often very ethereal, very thoughtful lyrics. When you come to do uh, a concert period, but a festival concert, do you take a different? Out. Do you take we a different? We rock out. Yeah, we um, we um, emphasise the rocky, noisy, feeding back stuff, and we do do we do do ethereal and stuff, but we um, we're wilder and looser and a lot more vibrant than, than our records would suggest. I think a lot of people are, are surprised by how beefy we are. Delia in, in your sound at times. What, what was it that attracted you to like psychedelic music and, and brought you to injecting that into your own? Well, I've always been attracted to psychedelic things, and another word for psychedelic is surrealistic, fantasy. I mean, um, my mother read me Alice in Wonderland when I was four. I thought that was a pretty psychedelic book. 
So when the Beatles stumbled upon Psychedella in 1967, my dad said, that's it, I'm not listening to the Beatles anymore, and I was like, this is it, this is when it started. Everyone was a lot happier. Mm. It's like a gang, is it the team sort of feeling that you miss? Yeah, there's a bit of that happens, yeah. Yeah, which is sometimes, sometimes is really funny, and other times you think, you know, what am I doing at this stage of life? Walking around with four guys, you know, pretending we're, we're sort of, um, you know, the wild bunch just getting into town. Mm -hmm. And we often walk down the main street of Grafton, sort of whistling high noon <laughs> as, we, <laughs> as we watch the sort of the, the local heavies coming towards us. <laughs> so look at that jerk in the floral shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lift me up into those whirring blades I've got to grind. I've got to grind, grind it out. You've got songwriter. Uh, oh no, I set out to, to write, hopefully write songs that people would want to um, buy and, and that they'd take home and like. Um, if you're not aiming at doing that, you know, it's sort of dubious why why you're even putting records out. Um, it was never a calculated thing where I sat down and said, I'm going to be this and I'm going to do this and get pop records in the chair. So long, so long between mirages. Well, there is no mirage about the fact that he is Steve Kilby. He is in the room. He's about to come and speak to us. Of course, a year ago, they, the church was inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame, and I have to say that it was one of the most entertaining experiences uh, that I've been sort of witnessed. And uh, we have our own moment. Please welcome and show your enormous admiration and enthusiasm for the wonderfully gifted Steve Kilby. <laughs> now you don't have to hold it for the whole thing. I will take it back now. But I just this is my mic. This is your mic. That mic. Any mic you wish, mic. Glenn A. Baker. Why couldn't we have had some hyperbole from you? I was a bit modest. Okay. Now the question. While you're here, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Do you remember backstage at that Divinals gig? You and I were standing there like gunslingers, and I said, "Who was the bass player in the Flaming Cantaloupes?" And you said, "Joe Blower." Correct. And then you throw one at me. Who was the flute player in the, in the barreling waterfowl? God, we can be boring, can't and we? I, no, but... And then, finally, I said, who was the keyboard player in Grand Funk Railroad? And you didn't know. So I'm challenging you. I'm, and Ray I Burgess and I are going to tag team you for the rock brain of the universe. If you... I'm going to go and take your poxy statue with me <laughs> in a fit of spite. That's what my... No. I'll put my statue against yours, all right? Yeah. I think the girls want to give you one too. So oh, you God. may not want to take theirs okay. until you finish talking. Go for it, boys. Okay. Um, thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen.